Hello? Hello, Mrs. Travis. Yes? My name is Katherine Wilson. I work for the United Research Center. I'm calling about a survey that we're conducting on the health care needs of older people. I hope this is a good time for you. Mrs. Travis, would you like me to repeat what I just said? If you're trying to sell some service... I, I assure you that I'm not selling anything. Did you by any chance receive our letter or see our notices up at the Senior Center? What company? It's the United Research Center, and the study is being sponsored by the National Institutes of Health. I remember getting something in the mail. Well, we wrote to tell you about a study that NIH is sponsoring on the health care needs of older people. You've been selected to take part in the study, and your participation is very valuable to us. Well, I don't know. And I've got to get off the phone now. W would it be all right if someone calls you later this afternoon, say, after 3 o'clock? All right. Great. Thank you. Even though Catherine didn't actually interview Mrs. Travis, she got much further than John did. Let's look carefully at how Catherine handled the call. My name is Catherine Wilson. I work for the United Research Center. I'm calling about a survey that we're conducting on the health care needs of older people. I hope this is a good time for you. Notice how slowly and carefully Catherine speaks. You don't need to rush through an introduction since older adults are often very patient with callers. Speaking clearly also helps your listener understand what you're saying. Always show the courtesy of saying something like, I hope this is a good time. By assuming that it is, you're being positive, while at the same time allowing a respondent to speak up if it is not. Mrs. Travis, would you like me to repeat what I just said? If a respondent doesn't answer immediately, ask if you should repeat the question or ask if the question was clear. You should probe with questions like that to make sure that you're being understood. And in a telephone interview, don't pause too long between questions or in your responses the respondent might think that you've hung up. If you're trying to sell some service... I assure you that I'm not selling anything. When you first call, older persons might think you're selling something. Be ready for this assumption. Take the time to address their concerns and calmly reassure them that you aren't selling anything. Also, remember that you can't assume that the respondent knows about the study. A mailed notice may be ignored, the respondent may not read it because of physical or visual impairments, or they simply might not connect the letter with a subsequent phone call. I remember getting something in the mail. Well, we wrote to tell you about a study that NIH is sponsoring on the health care needs of older people. If they haven't heard about the project, just start from scratch and tell them about it. That's why it's important that you know the details of the study, its goals, who's funding it, and how the results will be used. And I've got to get off the phone now. W would it be all right if someone calls you later this afternoon, say, after 3 o'clock? Catherine is flexible in rescheduling the interview later that afternoon. She doesn't argue with the respondent or push her to stay on the phone. When rescheduling, be specific. It's often easier for a respondent if you pick a definite time to call back. All right. Throughout. Great. Catherine is confident and sincere. She's professional. Try not to hesitate or show nervousness because this can diminish people's trust in you. The important thing in those first few minutes is to establish rapport and trust with the respondent. When introducing yourself, remember to memorize key points of introduction. Be patient and speak slowly. Be sensitive to the respondent's concerns offer to call back, and document all of your calls. After the introduction, the next step is to enlist the respondent's full cooperation. This is an important task. You have to be sure that the respondent understands the study well enough to make an informed decision to participate. I forgot that the survey results are going to be used to plan health care services for older people. That's an important point to make. That's right. It's a very valuable study, and it's your job to make sure they understand that. You have to let them know that this study could potentially improve their lives or their children's lives. Why don't you try one here, now that you're more familiar with the study? Okay.
Hello, Mr. Moore. Yes? Uh, hi, my name is John Rose. I'm calling from the United Research Center. Uh, we're doing a study that's being sponsored by the National Institutes of Health uh, on the health care needs of older people. I hope this is a good time for you. What do you want from me? Uh, well, I'd like to ask you some questions about your health and about the type of health care services you use. My neighbor's a lot sicker than I am. Why don't you call him? I'm in great shape for someone my age. Uh, uh, why don't I call your neighbor? Um, well, sir, you see, actually, we selected your name uh, randomly, and so I need to hear what you have to say. It's like a lottery. Each number is selected by chance, but you have to use the one that's picked. So I, I can't call anyone else in your place. Sir, your answers are very important to us because they represent answers of many other people like you. Who's paying for this? Well, it's being funded by the National Institutes of Health, which is a federal agency. Oh, not another waste of taxpayers' money. Oh, excuse me, sir, but it's not a waste. The results of this study will be used to plan health care services for seniors whose needs we can only know about from older people like yourself. Mr. Moore, what you have to say is important to us, and your responses will be completely confidential. How do I know this is legitimate? Did you receive our introductory letter? I don't know. My son goes to the mail. I understand your concern. We sent a letter in the mail, but if you didn't receive it, I can mail you more information. You can also call our project director or the senior center to verify our study. Uh, I can give you the names and numbers if you'd like. No, that's okay. I believe you. What will this involve? Well, some questions on the phone, and then I'd like to make an appointment for a home visit where someone would come over and do a longer interview and take your blood pressure, weight, and height measurements. Oh, um, okay. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Now, the first question is, what is your marital status? I'm married. Thank you very much, Mr. Moore. Goodbye. Well, that wasn't so difficult. You did an excellent job of addressing Mr. Moore's concerns. Oftentimes, people don't want to bother, and they put up roadblocks. They say things like, uh, it's not a good time, or ask someone else. I'm too old. You took the time to reassure him and explain why he was chosen and why his participation is important. People have to feel that the benefits of participating outweigh the time it takes. Well, Mr. Moore finally agreed, but what about people who flat out refuse and won't tell you why? Acknowledge their concerns. Answer all their questions. Above all, be respectful and flexible. If you sense that someone is busy or isn't feeling well, suggest that you call them back at a more convenient time. The key is not to upset or irritate them and to leave the door open for later contact. John has clearly made progress. When Mr. Moore questioned the study's legitimacy, John patiently and calmly encouraged him to verify the project. This shows why it's important to contact community groups prior to the study. Giving people the option of contacting an organization they know about can really help establish the trust between you and a respondent. It can mean the difference between participation and refusal. Community groups can also help tip you off to possible problems that local residents might be having, for instance, with persistent salespeople or even con artists. Knowing about such problems can help you anticipate and respond sensitively to respondents' concerns. When trying to enlist a respondent's cooperation, it's helpful to send an introductory letter, alert local community groups, Explore the reasons for any hesitancy in participating in the study. Explain how a respondent's name was selected. Address their specific concerns. Encourage them to verify the study themselves. And describe the benefits of the study to them.